of owning a cafe and other heroic deeds by Buerd Tisterel. Chapter 95 The Calm Before the Storm Letting Toshinori and David walk ahead of them, Shota squeezed Marai's shoulder reassuringly as they made their way down the back stairs, the laughter of children and applause rushing up to greet them as they descended. Ozzy Hero is as popular as ever, hmm? He asked through a pleased, well-meaning chuckle that had the future seer blushing a little. He's been dying to show off some new tricks he's developed. Getting to be with the study group has done wonders for his confidence, you know. Nezu says that his teacher training is progressing so well thanks to the encouragement they give him. Teenagers being fifteen and eighteen are a much tougher crowd, especially those on the hero course, aren't they? Sharing a juggle with a nod of agreement, the pair of them nearly ran into Toshinori's blue caped back as the man in front of them suddenly stopped at the door which led to the cat maintenance room. Blinking when the blonde and brunette balked, they watched as the number one awkwardly looked at them over his pulled shoulder. Uh, Shotokun, he tried both gesturing him forward. We seem to have a situation him. He furthered his tone bewildered. Blinking, he skirted under the other's arm, his brows reaching for his hairline. Before you say anything, Davi said, Homura curled in his arms. She actually asked for it. He furthered calmly, a slow smirk creeping up his heads of features, while Keigo, his expression sheepish, looked up at them from where he sat on the floor. Strangely, his usually full wings were sparse, and although he held a few longer feathers in his hand, the rest were... Oh. Twitching and shuddering to form a human-shaped cocoon, which was juddering in the corner the furthest away from the door. I... Do I want to know? He asked as a girlish squeal erupted from the pillar of feathers that now squirmed and wriggled in mounting excitement. Nobuni said, and I quote, If you don't physically stop me, I will go out there and start screaming about marriage. His oldest ward reported dutifully from where he was perched upon the worktop they used to mix up the feline's food, his shoulders shrugging nonchalantly despite his shitty grin. So, you guys are all good, right? I don't need to call in the bulldozers or anything. Bulldozers? Man, I repeated through a shocked snicker. He and the other men now properly stood in the space with Toshinori, leaning down to scoop up Hiro, with David peering at the kitten with a little smile pulling his lips. Don't work knows what I mean. The 18-year-old returned pleasantly, his turquoise eyes then moving to the American carefully. Tell him that his kid has been adopted by the other smalls, would you? They've swapped phone numbers, email addresses, and Spinner found an app that they've all downloaded to translate Japanese to English and vice versa. He said, I still don't like him, though. And, hey, you want to tell him that? Then go for it. He furthered with a shrug, the cat he held purring deeply and headbutting his chest whilst Keiko snickered. You're incorrigible. Shota chuckled whilst he approached them, his right hand ruffling that still dark mop of hair, first before tickling under a preening home rest gin, before he moved to lean against the workbench his oldest ward had sat on, those long, jean-covered legs swinging a little. Guys, why don't you head through to the cafe while I see to Namori, all right? He offered his hands, then cupping the, his pusheen mug that was filled with dark, fragrant coffee that Tina had made for him with a sigh. Uh, sure thing. David, shall we see how Melissa is getting on, and I'll introduce you to everyone else, eh? Huh? Toshinori grinned after returning Hiro to the floor, those beautiful blue eyes locking with his. Don't, don't be too long, okay? He murmured fondly, the tone causing him to blush, the teens and Mirai to snicker, and the feather mummy to squeal once more. Waving them off with a fond eye roll, he took a hefty chug from the caffeinated beverage and sighed, his left hand returning to delicately scratch behind the one-eyed Siamese's ear. Well, that was... Interesting, he told the room at large. You sure everything's okay? The flame quirk user asked whilst he nodded at Kago to release a now bouting Namori, who hugged herself with a girlish quiver before skipping over to join them. Yeah, well, as much as it can be, he offered mildly as one of the best women he knew snugged into his other side and the sandy haired teen, now fully rewinged, walked over as well, his quirk still painfully taunting the kittens. 
Mr. Shield wanted to take Toshidori back to the States today. He wants! The trio barked Dabi and the R-rated pro's demeanor instantly shifting! That's why. It's all okay. He juggled his mug plays down quickly so he could rope his arms around their shoulders to calm them and prevent them from storming off. Guys, honestly, they were together for a long time and went through a lot together. I think Shield Sam was just well shocked into action by Toshi wanting to propose to me. His heart was broken a bit more by the thought of it, so I can get that. I can see what he was thinking, and I feel sympathetic, you know. Dude! The first wing user blinked, those quills puffing up a disbelief whilst this ward sneered and the more he balked. How? Why are you so calm? That smarmy prick came here for your man! He said, those long ebony lashes fluttering. If this had happened with me and Rumi, man oh man, whoever tried to split us up would get their legs broke if they were lucky, you know? I don't doubt it. He snickered, the two people held back still fuming. But seriously. Shield Sun isn't a threat to me or the relationship I have with my partner. He smiled, the three of them owlishly regarding him. What? If Toshinori had wanted to reunite with him after he divorced, then he would have done. If he still loved him, he would have broken things off with me last year. He reminded with a little shrug. But he doesn't. But he didn't. He, he wants to marry me. And I, I'd love to take that step with him too. He murmured, his cheeks blushing as the true implications of such a thing dawned on him. Oh, we've not really talked about the ins and outs of it yet. Uh, there was a lot of time for that, too. Especially since I want you guys involved in our decisions as well, but, but I really think we can make a go of it, don't you? And that, that's all that really matters, isn't it? Daring to look at three of the people he loved more than anything, he blinked when Debbie helped out. You true forgiven for your own good, you crazy Uncle Olga. I was leaning into him as the winged pro on, and then Mori attached herself to his other side like a barnacle and squealed. Again. You take him for words. She almost sobbed as she squeezed her cheek against his and hugged him tight despite his ward grumbling as they were nudged down the workbench thanks to the force of it. And don't you worry not, okay? You can just say I loved up and have it, and we will deal with never by it if he tries anything again, you know? After transforming the deck of cards he'd been tricking the tots with into a lush bouquet of flowers, which he split and shared amongst each of them, Atsuhiro bowed at their applause. <sighs> Being appreciated and loved by the wonderful cafe community was a truly uplifting feeling, wasn't it? Thank you, thank you. You were all really too kind. He grinned with a bow, his top hat retrieved from the head of a preening Izuku. He'd have been posing for photographs with it, the little dear. And what did you think, Melissa Chan? Mm? He asked the decidedly delightful, polite, and cheerful girl in perfect English. I think you're amazing. Going, you know, ah, did I say it right? Yes, yes, you did. He praised whilst the other children gave her thumbs up and coursed. Good job! Her little face beaming as they crowded around their phones to message each other with Spinner, Tomra, and himself assisting amidst the early afternoon traffic frequenting the Northern Echo. And to think that he could have missed out on all of this. Then he might have stayed trapped in his life of vacuous stealing and petty crimes to fund the lifestyle that hadn't suited him and furnish an apartment too big and empty for just one person. That he might never have met Shota, been supported, no, rescued, by Mariah and his agency. That he might never have met, tormented, flirted, and subsequently fallen in love with an incredible person who cherished his eccentricities, adored his style, and showered him with an affection he had never felt before. That was why, when All Might walked out of the cafe maintenance room with a world-famous inventor and his darling, he didn't zip over to them right away. Oh, no, he had his pro-hero image to consider, didn't he? And so he bided his time and waited for Toshinori to lead the brunette and his lover over to where the assortment of themes and dots were falling over the flowers he'd magicked up for them. 
Mama, she's sung. I know. He greeted congenially enough when the American blinked his way. He had just been talking at and smiling along with his daughter and seemed to be a bit bewildered. Ah, good. David doesn't understand Japanese, my friend. Their symbol of peace offered a little sheepishly between bites of the biscuits Eijiro and Itoshi had offered him, his mind clearly torn between giving translations and wanting to consume more treats. Mirai, such a clever darling, had suddenly become embroiled in a conversation with Mimi's group, those sharp golden eyes regarding him fondly before purposefully turning away. Ah, what more permission did it need? Oh, well, as a man of the world... He juggled his own dark eyes moving to cobalt. Parlez vous français? He purred out. Eh, oui, monsieur, the older genius replied, his brows rising in surprise. Perfect! Wonderful! Wonderful! He stated, his cheerful demeanor never changing. In that case, then, I would very much like to tell you, man to man, that in past times I have been an angel and. Although I've turned up with a new lipotter, should you ever pull this down like this again and try to harm um, or upset a lovely eatery or not? Well, he chuckled, let's just say that cards are the only thing I can make it disappear. You understand? Mm? This isn't a threat, per se, only a friendly little reminder. The Stray Cat Cafe is hollow ground, after all, and since Shota has welcomed you here, you are welcome. Until you're not. N'est-ce pas? Why? The older of the two huffed, his arms folding, and his expression considering. And I can't argue with you about the magic of this place, he admitted with a mild shrug, his eyes softening when they alighted upon his daughter, surrounded by children who didn't care that she was quirkless, who were eager to befriend, regardless of why they'd come here today. This cafe kind of reminds me of a diner my grandparents used to take me to. I almost can't believe that there are still eateries where people come together like this. He mused, his elbow nudging a munching all night side as he reverted back to English. You weren't kidding about how special the Stray Cat Cafe is at all, were you, huh? Uh, no. No, I wasn't. The powerhouse fiend, his tone proud and infinitely pleased as he similarly looked around. It's almost as incredible as the man who created it. Watching as the tots escorted David and Melissa back to their car with Tosh and Nori, Shoda sent a message to Inko. I saw Shoda. We've had a visitor today who is one of the Xavier Institute's biggest patrons. He's offered Izuku a gold membership, which will mean medical school. If he still wants to attend it, we'll be virtually free of charge. Just give Tosh and Nori a call later and he'll translate everything you need to know and put you in touch with Shield Sam, alright? Midoriya Inko. What? Show? Show that's incredible! Chuckling to himself, his dark eyes watched as the car pulled away, his tats avidly waving before he turned to the lovely note, letter really, that Shield Melissa had penned for him in the three hours she'd spent for the other children. Dear Mr. Azawa, I have had the best afternoon at Straight Cat Cafe. The kitties are so beautiful and happy, and I've told my dad that I want to adopt some cats when we get home, just like you did from a shelter, to give some older cats a new life and lots of love. Also, your cookies are amazing! Can I please have the recipe since I don't live in Japan? I promise I won't tell anyone and only make them for the people I really care about. I can't wait to come back to see you and all of my new friends. I hope we can be friends forever. Some of the kids I go to school with don't really like me because I'm quirkless, and I was so scared that they'd feel the same, but they really, really don't, do they? That's why, even though I really like everyone, I was so happy to meet Izuku, you know? To hear him talk about wanting to be a doctor and a hero makes me feel like I can be anything I want to be, too. He says that you've always loved and supported him, just like my dad loves and supports me, but to see someone like you who has such an amazing quirk not care about such things and push everyone to be their best really got me thinking that that's the kind of person I want to be. That's why I'm making a promise to myself and sharing it with you because I just know you'll understand not to feel down about me and quirkless, but to try my best to be someone people can rely on. Someone who uses their brain to help others. Quirk or no? I'd also really like to come back to Japan to study, you know. 
That way I can come to the cafe all the time and eat more of your yummy food. Could I also please have your lemonade and muffins recipe? Oh, and I'd love to know how to make bento boxes just like yours. I'm sorry if I'm being greedy. I'll keep everything a secret, promise. Cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye, the works. Oh, and thank you for loving my Uncle Mike so much. When they when I'm older, I hope someone looks at me the way he looks at you. I can see that you make him super happy, and that makes me super happy too. Take care and please have a toshi and the others email me when they can. Hugs and kisses, Lisa Chan. Smiling gently, he folded the paper, covered in lovely drawings, and placed it in the drawer of a service bar. The next time he went shopping or made a stock order, he'd be buying another frame to put it in, so that it could be proudly displayed amidst the other letters people had given him over the past two years. At this rate, he'd need to build an extension just to show such valuable things off, wouldn't he? With their date looming, when 1830 rolled around, all of their precious people were gathered in the cafe and awaiting an announcement that, regardless of Namori's excitement, had managed to stay under wraps. Shotgun, I, I know that you told me to stop apologizing about this afternoon, because you should, you well-meaning dope. But I, I can't help but feel awful about everything, you know. Standing in his kitchen, his hands busily cooking up the stock that Chizomi, Dabi, Tomra, and Tomago would be selling while they were out, Joda huffed out his eye, his eyes glittering with mirth as he observed his lover, Fiance! who was perched somewhat angrily on one of the three stools his ward sat at in the morning for the breakfasts. Toshi, you have no control over other people, he reminded gently before returning to his chopping. And besides, you're worth fighting for, you know. He smiled. I don't blame David for wanting to persuade you. He juggled. And if you'd wanted to leave, I wouldn't have stopped you. He sighed, his hands momentarily stopping in their motions. I learned long ago that loving people sometimes means having to let them go for their sake. I Whoa! Blinking, his feet suddenly a good feet off of the floor, Shota laughed and allowed the other to bury his face into his neck, his own arms bracketing the ones that held him. Toshi. He chuckled. That, that tickles. He giggled as the other pampered kisses along the skinny belt. You are worth fighting for, Shotokun. The older man breathed between pressing his lips to supple pale flesh. And I would fight until the last breath in my lungs for you. You are my father, the most wonderful person I have ever met. And I thank my lucky stars every day that we met. That you gave me a chance that you allowed me. I love you, he murmured. I thought you loved me in return. I sometimes I can't believe how lucky I am, you know. Squirming a little, the younger tilted his head to the side a little more, giving the other access to his jawline. I'm only confident enough to say such things because I know that you love me too, Toshi. I love you, I trust, and I know that you'd never intentionally hurt me. Let alone cheat, he admitted as the other cuddled him all the more. I'd sooner die, I swear it. And so, I demand it, you know, for me to ask you properly in front of our friends. Nodding, his booted feet returning to the red sparkly linoleum floor, Shota grabbed a tea cloth to wipe his hands before turning around in the comforting circle of his dear God, Beyonce's arms, their eyes lagging. We have a lot to talk about in terms of what this means for the boys, though. He said, his smile softening. I don't think it'd be practical for me to move into your penthouse, and although Tomra and Dobby are old enough to live by themselves, I wouldn't want to leave them. Especially now. Not with the Todorokis needing our combined support. He further- Oh! I don't, I don't. The blonde grinned, his strong hands gently running over his younger lover's back. That's why I'm going to move into the apartments over there. I've been doing some digging, and well, at our five in a row, with two on top, I'm looking to buy. He revealed the eatery owner's eyes widening. I figured that you, Miyao and Toshi, could move into them once they're combined, and should Toma and Davi not want to join us, well, they could stay above the cafe and have Spinner and some of the other teenagers join them, perhaps. Oh, and there would be room for Shinso Kimiko, too, of course, when she's released. He grinned. But as you say, we have plenty of time to discuss such things. He reminded gently. 
even if you want to stay at the cafe and only sleep over every other night, I just want you to be happy, and I want to be here with you and our extended family, all right? Blinking, his smile luminous, Shota stood up on his tiptoes for a kiss, his heart full. Damn! He couldn't think of a better way for an afternoon to end.